What's up, Dirty Plant Hoes? Oh my God, this is so weird. What's up, you guys? I'm trying to pull up a comment section to where I can better see what you guys are saying. Give me un momento. Un momento, <laughs> four, five, four. Okay, so... This is super nerve-wracking, and my heart is absolutely racing. <laughs> What's up all? Oh my God, look at how many people are in here. Jeez Louise, say hi. Hello. <laughs> this is Let me so just weird. tell you that your girl here is extremely nervous. You'd think that she's unboxing some sort of a oh, sphincty yeah, sanctity or whatever nails. that fancy I, one is. I tried to do them like you guys wanted them, like with the red accent and the gold chrome, but it didn't, it didn't work out as good as I thought it would, so... What's up, Maya Taylor? What's up, Cody? Oh my gosh. What's up, Shelly? What's up, Chris? What's up, Francis? Hey, you guys. Oh, this is so crazy. So, what's up? What's, hey, Julia. What's up, Julia? Uh, not just Miss Niagara. Everybody's here. That's, oh, what's up, Julie? Hey, glad you could make it. So, today we're just going to be doing, we're just going to be talking about whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, it's going to be based upon, you know, some begonia care questions. I think I get a lot of those a lot of the time. So if you, <laughs> I have nail plant and nail envy, thank you so much. You guys, you guys are too sweet to me. Um, I get a lot of uh, crap from our family, our immediate family about just my general appearance. So I appreciate that the internet gets it. It's pretty nice. Um, so if you guys have during this thing, during this live stream, if you guys have any begonia questions, drop them in the chat. If I don't see them for some reason, go back and make the question again, you know, copy and paste it again so I can see it. <laughs> yeah, um, we got someone saying my anthuriums are turning brown. So that sucks really bad. Do you use a water meter or anything like that? Just curious. Uh... I think you guys are so cute. Isn't that nice? Uh, Casey's having a little bit of a belly ache this evening. He's having some serious... Correction. Not a little bit. Yeah, he's... A lot. Yeah, he's having so, us... <laughs> <laughs> just warning you, I may be coming and going yeah, quite so frequently. He, right, so he may have to exit frame, and it may just be you and me hanging out for a while while he's... Uh, doing his and we're, thing. We're crammed in here, so when I exit, it may not be gracefully. <laughs> Just warning you. Let's. Uh, Julia has a question. She says, how not to kill, kill a begonia rex, red kiss, or something or the other. So I would say my first three tips are, see, look, they all love you and they want you to feel better. And that's sweet. That is sweet, my but first, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> my first three tips are terracotta pots, because the begonias typically, even the sensitive ones for me, don't want to be, don't want to sit in their own moisture, even though that's all you hear from every blog post that you read. Number two would be to only water when. <laughs> Sorry about that. That is so rude. Sorry. <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh, Brad's here. Pam's here. <gasps> Tattooed Pam and Cable Pam. We have to call them two different names. Sorry, you guys. What's up, everybody? But anyways, terracotta pots. Get yourself a water meter. Do not water until it's dry. And then give it a lot of light. I think people kind of push begonias back to this, the back wall of their plant room thinking that that's going to work. But usually they'll just kind of crap out. So you don't want to do that. No weed killer. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Jesus, Casey. Oh, thank you to... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, thank you to Nicole from My Clean Lease for helping us figure out how to set up this live in the first place because we've never done it before. We're just little country bumpkins over here. We don't know how to work the internet. She was getting so nervous. So, <laughs> Nicole, you helped calm her down a little bit. and She was in the right places doing the right um, things, but she was nervous as all get out. Sherry said she just got a maculata because of me. That is so cool. The fact that anybody buys a begonia. Is that <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Immaculata whitey eye. What we've been going oh, to Lowe's looking for about a million <laughs> Sounds times. like a condition. Sounds like something I might have right Let's now. Let's see. Uh, why are you aren't supposed to touch begonia leaves? Okay, Riley asked. That's I a myth. Watch this. 
Yeah, everybody just watching awe about how he touches all my leaves because, by the way, he doesn't respect that rule, and it's very bothersome. Um, <laughs> um, I've never experienced a sumac the unicorn. He's a, he's a big fan. What's up? What's up? Um, he said, have you ever experienced any powdery mildew? And I have not. No. I think that I try to keep like a pretty good humidity level to where things stay super humid, but not, but we have a lot of airflow. Remember what on my plant tour videos, we talked a lot about how the fans are consistently on all the time. And that's good because it doesn't give a chance for the moisture to just sit and hang. You know, so I'm looking um, around the room right now and one wall, 65% <laughs> humidity. We got 60% and then we got 55% over here. So Let's that's pretty see. much Amber normal. asks, do you ever have any problems with mold in your plant room because of the high humidity? No, I've never experienced any mold, but don't forget, I've got a box fan and I'm sure you're going to hear Winston snoring in the background and I'm really sorry about that. This is his sixth nap for the day. I've got a box fan. Casey's got a box fan. We run the ceiling fan. Is there any other fans we have going in here? It's consistent. Especially at night, if anything did have any moisture on it, it's not going to have moisture on it by the time the morning comes around. So, lots and lots and lots of airflow. Um, is that with all begonias? Is a cissus discolor considered a begonia from uh, Maya Taylor? At, no, that's actually in the grapevine family. So, that's completely different ordeal. And I don't think that their leaves are, uh, I think their leaves are a lot hardier than like a lot of begonia leaves for sure. What are you looking at? Oh, this um, channel, we answer, we answer. my begonia maculata whitey eye has weird spots. Got it from Lowe's. Um, planted by pastries. Hey, what's up? Um, I would say that any kind of time you have spots on your leaves like that, I just kind of get rid of the ones that you can get rid of as many as you can and leave some for, for you know, so it can keep growing and producing photosynthesis. But for the most part, spray it down with some sort of uh, mildewy rust type of spray and leave as few leaves as that because they'll grow they're very prolific and you'll get more leaves you just don't want to spread any diseases or anything so nicole asked for my clean <laughs> leaves how many humidifiers do we have in one room and what kind are they <laughs> the only humidifiers we use are they're called air, air innovations and they yeah. got the long nose Big, long telescope neck on, on them yeah. uh, we have two of them in here but we've also recently added a couple of uh can i say that right now <laughs> what we have a double, yeah, we got a new double tank air innovation no. humidifier. What? That's still in the box. What? We added a couple of aquariums to the bedroom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've we got, got some, some ideas coming up here. with that. Yeah. So they're adding some humidity as well. It seems like it did actually raise the room humidity up about five points adding the aquariums. So, but we run two in the bedroom. We won, we run, we run one yeah. in our plant room occasionally but we usually kind of group the plants based on the humidity requirements and try to put all the high humidity requirements in here <laughs> oh by the way that cissus um peanuts plants remember how you asked me how do you keep your cissus alive and i told you i'd just gotten it and that i'm in the south and it's humid and i was hoping everything was going to be okay yeah mine died too hey suzette's so. garden what's up suzette from way back in the day <laughs> what's up casey's green thumb how's that uh plant oh she said can we get a dad joke Casey, just hang tight. They're, they'll they'll be coming naturally. <laughs> I don't yeah. know them off the top of my head. They just I'm inspired, so you'll probably hear okay. about thirty of them. Here's a good question. Pam's planty things. Do you bottom water your begonias? And that's yes, and that's no. Some of them I do. Some of them I don't. So if the leaves are super sensitive and they're the kind that melt, talking like terrarium type begonias. I bought them water only, and I use a very, like, you know, one of those squeezy bottles with the little nozzle on it, and I get right down in there. I don't even mess around with, like, oops, accidentally, ah, you know, no. I put it way down in there, and then I squeeze it so that we don't have any problems with getting moisture on the actual leaves, you know? That's a good question. Do you still use your moisture meter to water your philodendrons? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And no, I really don't. And I think that that's something that you have to learn over time. But I still need my moisture meter because there are times when I'm like, Confused. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you're sometimes struggling with the plant. When I'm struggling. And by the way, when you have nails like this, you got to, there's no way that thing's getting in there. I can't even press like this on top of the soil. So a lot of times I do, I do lean on it. But if the pot's so light, it's pretty yeah. mistakeable. Look at this crap. She about killed me with these things earlier. I did I'm not. He's, you're so dramatic. <laughs> I 
I did not. I thought somebody I was stabbing me with a knife bit. in the back. Wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> um, I transferred my sister's discolor clipping to Lekka and so far so good. Maya, that might be the answer because mine's dead. Um, someone said, Shay Random said, do you fertilize? If so, how often? I do fertilize, but when I remember. Does that make sense? So I try to do it once a month, but sometimes it probably is once every two months and I use miracle Grow liquid fertilizer. How dare you? I know. I know. I'm a real, I'm a real piece of crap. So someone also um, said they didn't like begonias, but now they want to try Darth Vader. So good luck. <laughs> good luck with that. Hey, ants in my plants. What's up, Rev? What's up, Paula? Um, <laughs> no problem, Pam. Um, I do find, um, from Jingmao Panda, do you find that began, begonias like to be tight or root bound? Yes, I do. And I will, I think that everybody should just leave them alone in whatever pot they are until you stop seeing growth until it's like completely, co seriously. Until no, it's I'm completely just reading some Rachel scissor oh, hands. <laughs> Rachel scissor hands. <laughs> That's yeah. what it feels like. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of that that goes on. My kids I actually stabbed one of my children, but that was on purpose in church today. So they, they're good tools also. Um, uh, love you guys. I just got a begonia escargot today at Lowe's. Thanks for the care tips. Thank you. Hi, Jill C. And we brought a begonia escargot in here just to show you guys. Because this begonia escargot for me, I think indoors, it's never going to get any bigger than this. I've had it for about a year. Old leaves fall off. New leaves come. But it never really gets very big. So... I hope you have really like better luck than I it's had. Because with I it. keep touching the leaves. Probably. <laughs> um, someone asked what would be my most important Ethereum tip, and I would say neglect. Everybody needs to be a more neglectful plant parent because my plants seem to absolutely thrive off of me completely ignoring them. Well, to the point of almost just almost everybody droops in the house. What are you laughing at? Be sure just to talk to people. You ain't got so, to point them out. So, John anyway. Sheffield asks, love you both, but can't figure out who's the biggest drama queen. I think you're going to have a split uh, decision on this one. He's because got I'm a gonna tummy ache right now, so I don't know. I think that already gives him a point in his that, direction. <laughs> that we had am I not allowed to have a tummy <laughs> ache? Lord have mercy. Um, that would be our see. son Owen. Yeah. He is the biggest drama queen of them all. <laughs> no kidding. Lord. My son yeah. Owen takes after me 100%. God forbid you pick a restaurant he doesn't like or a food he doesn't mm -hmm. like or we're out of soda. Yeah, Morgan Stevens. What's up, Morgan? She says she's killed three escargos. Don't feel bad. This one has been on the verge of death and then sprang back and on the verge of death and then sprang back. And I, and I have, like, terrarium begonias and the escargot gives me problems. So, um... Let's see. I really want a begonia maculata whitey eye. Are they hard to care for? Do you recommend them from Stacy Stable? I don't have one, so I can't help you out with that. I've been looking for one. Costa Farms is supposed to be dropping them at some point, but they're leaving your girl hanging out here in the middle of the sticks. Don't appreciate that. So a lot of people are saying they don't have begonias, but they're thinking about getting them. So what would be your biggest oh, Nicole, draw for begonias? You begonias? don't need the drama of these begonias, girl. Those cactus. But the, the, I admire the, the, your cactus collection. But Go the, ahead. I think... As a, as a newcomer and a non-plant aficionado, I'm here just because she loves everything. But I think the begonias are cool because they have that lot. They have very unique, a lot of uniqueness that a lot of other plants don't have. They tend to be real fuzzy. They tend to be colorful. They bloom like crazy, even though the blooms are kind of goofy looking sometimes. They're just kind of different. They're just a kind of remind me of like an old rugged Jurassic old like a, yeah. something from the from the old world like you know thousands of years ago that doesn't it just looks like it shouldn't really exist in nature i don't know that's a weird answer I think <laughs> that was long-winded as well <laughs> don't be a drama queen over here pam's pretty plants what's up pam this is so weird being live thank you for being here all my begonias go through death and life cycle i don't fall for their antics anymore me neither you should see the way that my begonias get i actually was trying to wait until one got real dramatic i'll go over here and grab her in just a sec so y'all can look at how long i let these things go yeah she's got some good footage of how they <laughs> the, uh, the swing katie pierce i love you guys you're like my sister and brother-in-law it's so funny the best video is when you're both shocking each other speaking of the shock collar video our most disliked 
our most hated. We lost the most subscribers on it, and I had a whelp on my it neck. It was a for like sinking three days. turd of a video, according to all the stats. Yeah. But going into it, we thought that was like the best idea we've had because, you know, you never know. So, you know, occasionally we're gonna do that, and that's just the way it works. Uh, we liked it. Squiddy Cake said, "All my begonias are crisping up, but I keep the humidity 50 to 60 percent. Not sure what else to do." You know, I think that experimenting with the begonias is really good because some of the begonias just won't live for me. And I don't want you guys to feel like I'm, you know, the begonia master or anything like that. Far from the truth. I've tried several types of begonias that just ain't going to hack it. They are they're, difficult. They're never going to hack it in my house. And just like caladiums, some just ain't going to ever hack it. So what would be an easy one to start with? All cane begonias. So like this type right here, which is called a, a whimsy. It's like the YDI, but it's like a smaller version. I got it from Logies. Casey ordered it from me. Completely unsolicited. So that was really nice. You dang right. He fills was. up the bucket so that way when he empties it on occasion. Yeah, relationship advice. Everyone's got a, uh, a give a crap bucket. <laughs> and you want to fill it up for your partner because you will do stupid stuff that make them mad and you will empty that bucket to some degree. And if it's already empty, you're screwed. So fill the bucket up when you can so that when you do something stupid, you got a little reserve. <laughs> the last Redbox movie you saw from T minus one. I think, what did I make you watch last night? The movie? Yeah. What was the movie we, we watched? Last I don't night? know. It had a stupid ending that made me mad and I forgot. A stupid ending. Oh, the Mothman prophecy. Mothman prophecy. That's what I made him watch. Okay. Um, let's, this is not a recommendation. <laughs> Least dramatic begonia, in your opinion, that would be any cane begonias from not just Nits Niagara. That's such a hard right? name to say. Okay. Um, you can't get yours to bloom from Happy Little Bush. Even when I gave to my roommate, I don't get it. Light, I would say light would probably be the answer on that one. More light or stress it out a little bit more. Let it go longer before you water it and you'll trick it into going, I'm dying, I must reproduce. Uh, let it droop a little bit. You know, bit. just how people then, get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> disturbing but i could not stop watching peanuts plants i wanted to send you a super chat but i don't have the option um i have no idea how that works this is our first live don't worry about anything like that so don't be don't worry about that it's the thought that counts um i have john sheffield said i have issues with begonias in the house but this year i'm trying them in a terrarium and they're lasting so far at yeah see sometimes you just have to if they don't work in your room, try them in a terrarium. If they don't work in the terrarium, throw them in the garbage and live your life. You know what I mean? You don't need a plant that's going to really, really, really stress you out like that. And if you can, if you look back here, yeah. right over her <laughs> shoulder back here, you'll see a new terrarium oh, yeah. that we got. And we're going to do a video on that. We put some of our real high humidity required <laughs> requirement begonias back there. And they seem to be thriving in it. So we'll talk about that at a later time. Yeah, um, Courtney A. said, I just got a Begonia Exotica from Steve's Leaves, and they said to place a bag over till you got a cloche and the leaves rotted, but there was new leaves growing. Yeah, I had that problem, too. You put the plastic bag over the plant, right? Then the leaves are in contact with the plastic. And the moisture. Okay, and then once that happens, the Begonias don't like that, and they're just going to lose their leaves. So the only way I would suggest doing that is if you put stakes like this, to prop your bag up away from the leaves. Are you insane? Are you kidding me? I'm gonna quit trying that. Fired. Absolutely fired. I just emptied the bucket just a little bit. That was at least an eighth of my bucket. But right she's there. probably being a little drama queen. It's not bad <laughs> as it sounds. Uh, let's see. Um, someone said, OMG, life advice with dad. Yeah, he's good. At, he's got a lot of life advice. He's actually really good at it. But you can't, you can't argue with his results. Um, let's see. Who this? Who this? How are the Darths? Oh, how are the Darths? Well, Darth okay. did not like having Darth number two in the house. So they both kind of... I've got 135 people in here? <gasps> Get your life together. I can't believe this. <laughs> that answers the drama queen question. <laughs> Definitively. So, I, okay, I'm gonna get the darts. Hold up, hold on. You carry the conversation like we know you can. I can't carry the conversation. If I don't shut up. All right, I get it, go ahead. Okay, uh, we're getting ready to get the darts, so we're- If blah, you guys don't get your question answered, just re-ask it. Yep, because we are gonna post it later so y'all can ask it in the comment section. Okay, 
Here it is. So here's how the Darth is doing. This was the original Darth that we got from... Where did we get that from? This is Botanicas. This is the original Darth. This leaf that you're looking at with the gold rim, that's the newest leaf right there. And this is the leaf that's been slowly degenerating, you know, since we had that like big Halloween time failure on it. But I've left it there because God knows it's only got two. So it's got to have, you know what I mean? Like one to at least try to use for energy. You ought to so. see her watering it. She's so afraid of that plant because we had, I think it had two leaves when we got it. And it looked great. And then they started crapping. So, uh, she gets like a little, little, uh, plastic syringe like thing. And she'll put just like a little squirt of water on it, and then she'll sit there and look at it a little bit. And then she might give a little bit more squirt, but she's just terrified of it. Uh, Christian Barnes, welcome, new subscriber. I enjoy that. Um, oh, I do need a, uh, ants in my plant said so we need a tiny little red lightsaber to put in the pot with our dar. That I could be it. I thought about like doing a little figurine, too. That is a super cute idea. I'm yeah. so close to it. I'm so close to it. Speaking of which, um, if you cross one of your begonias, if you ever figure out how to do that, we're going to have to get it like a Luke Skywalker. Name. Oh, Cody. Sorry. I'm sorry. And she says I, I interrupt her all the time. Sorry. Cody said his dark lost all its leaves, and I was like, my bad. Yeah. And mine kind of went through that so, stage, too. So, uh, the reason that our Darth crapped out originally is Shipping. because, uh, well, no, the original one was doing great. She had it in a cloche. And then she tried to just like burp it a little bit and give a little bit of a gap, and it the humidity dropped to like eighty percent or seventy percent, and it just crapped out. Yeah, it's I was like trying it dried to out. just crack the terrarium and put like a pin, like a you know when the cloche with the, the dome. I was trying to lift the corner and like stick a pin in it, but then it just let too much air in, and it was it, a nightmare. I guess it dry got too dry, which you wouldn't think eighty or seventy percent <laughs> is too dry, but we keep it about ninety five right now. Um, let's see, uh, Kelly Hoya said, I love your nails and begonias, and thank you very much. Like I said, don't get a lot of support outside the home with that, so that's really nice. I really appreciate that. Casey always supports me doing my, I do my own nails. I don't know if you guys know that or not. People probably assume I spend a lot of money on my nails, but I don't. I actually bought acrylic powder, and I watch a channel on YouTube called Nao Nails out of the UK, and I learned how to do my own. Now, I've also permanently damaged two of my nails learning how to do my own. So beware and don't try that at home, children. Um, uh, I have fun taking care of difficult plants. Do y'all feel the same way? From Chris Plants. Yes, I do. I love a challenging plant. As soon as I hear that something's hard to grow, you, see, you know how I'm telling you guys don't stress out, don't worry about it. Just throw it away if it's bothering you. Total opposite for me. I yeah. will kill myself she trying to take figure her own it out. Advice. Yeah. She yeah. freaks out. <laughs> um, hey, hey, Lyra, what's up? She's my silver goddess right there in the chat section. Um, oh, I just got a new stand. Yay! What? From Happy Little Bush. Uh, that's slang you don't 100% understand. Uh, then what happens when my heart fern <coughs> feels air? It just hates air. Pam's pretty plants. Yes, your heart fern hates the air. It doesn't want to breathe the same air as we breathe. It's too good for us. It's actually a, uh, a mean girl plant. And mine's been sitting in my bathroom underneath a dome. I have not watered it in months. Yeah. And it's loving it in there. It's Completely life. enclosed, 100% yeah. humidity. I hate very it. Very little light. It hates me. We don't speak. It's loving it. I life. thought she was trying to kill it because, <laughs> like, I'll get in the soak in the tub or something, and I bump into it, and I think, well, it, it doesn't matter because it's been here forever, and she ignores it, but it's actually oh. driving. Uh, let's see. Plant to see with ash. Peaceful, peaceful planting. Mine clean leaves. Everybody didn't know I did my own nails. I thought I said. I thought I told you guys that I did my own nails before. Hey, Katie Pierre. I <laughs> thought it said Katie Perry, and I was like, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> Katy Perry showed up for my plant live. Yeah. Um, plant spots and whatnots. Dang woman, what can't you do? Let me tell you something right now. Not a whole damn lot. I tell Casey that all the time. Here we go. Here we go. I do my own hair. I do my own nails. I do my own makeup, obviously. No one's styling me. That's for damn sure. Y'all don't. Y'all ain't gonna have no stylist out there putting long socks on anybody with flip flops. So, but anyways, I save money, and that's the important point. Y'all hop in the comment section and tell Casey how much money I am I saving. I know, I know. These nails would weeks. be expensive if she had them done. 
And we probably the blinged spent... out set that I had that looked like the Jeffree Star nails, I was so proud of those. That would have cost at least like $160 in the salon. How much did it cost you? Five bucks? It cost me like five doc, five, five doc, yeah, five yeah, dollars. Five dollars. <laughs> and yeah, I went to Hobby Lobby and got some crystals and stuff like that. Um, how do y'all care for begonia, melana? I don't know how to say that. Melana to no, little bit of them. I don't care for them very much. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> quite finicky. I don't have one, so I don't have any care tips for that one in particular. Um, Tammy's Jungle said, "Love your hair." Um, Katie Pierre. Oh my God, you were great. Love all your videos. I'm struggling at the moment with my ZZ plant. Forgot to water. Uh, my ZZ plant that Cody sent me is not doing that great either. It actually lost a couple of leaves. So I think I may have screwed up with waiting too long also. So Cody's the man for the ZZ plants for sure. Um, yeah, yes, haven't watered somebody. his in months. I haven't handed the hammer to anybody. You're supposed to. Hand the hammer to somebody. Is it the hammer or was it the... Uh, oh, let's see... Yeah, pants free plants. She knew I did my own nails. Um, let's see. You're missing American Idol for this, Nicole? <sighs> is that still on? Is it? I don't watch TV anymore. I feel ashamed. I feel absolutely... I think you're one of the only people that actually still like to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Did you do it? Yep. Okay. Let's Literally, see. here's what we watch. <laughs> we watch reruns of Seinfeld and The Big Bang Theory. And that's about it. And that's, that may be the only TV we watch. <laughs> From James Hookaluk, sorry if I mispronounced your name, Begonia Pavanina, U485, or Talk at Night, which one has the most vibrant iridescence? And I can't speak to the Pavanina or the U485. I've only seen photos, but I am absolutely obsessed. But the Talk at Night, I've noticed in other people's what they say and uh, kind of my own experience that the the baby leaves are super iridescent. The older leaves kind of lose their iridescence a little bit. So maybe the U485 or the Pavanina aren't like that. But, you know, what are you going to do on that? Um, let's see. I'm actually missing American Idol. Yeah, I know, I know. Strong-ass woman from Peaceful Planting. That's right. Strong-ass woman. Yeah, you got to learn how to do stuff when you're really broke sometimes. Did you miss me? I messed chat? it up. <gasps> There we go. We're back live. Tonight's the season premiere. Jeez, Louise. Nicole has the really wrench. <laughs> beat the crap out She's of everybody. She's like, I have a give Pam a wrench, too. She'll beat someone with it. Yep. Let's she see. may just do it for the fun of it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Terracotta Dreamer. I don't know shit about begonias. I have a Hugh McLaughlin. Is that right? It's so pretty. With some good starter begonias. I would <laughs> I would suggest, um, like I was saying earlier, like any kind of cane begonias. I'm sweating, by the way, profusely, because this is the ner most nervous I I've I been. I think in my adult life, this is probably the most nervous I've been. You can feel their sweat if you rub back there, so I'd be careful. I would suggest yeah. any kind. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Do you want to start? I swear to God. I never finished. We'll play chicken live on the internet. And you will lose. You will lose. You will lose. You. Uh, you do don't this. make me. We agreed not to do this. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Grew up watching Seinfeld from Sassy and Succulent. We love Seinfeld. We watch it consistently. He already said that. Um, he, give her the ranch. Give her I the did. ranch. I okay. did. You're killing it. Oh my gosh. Uh, Pan's Free Plant says, my Harmony Storm Sunset has been super easy. It's weird how some are super easy and then some, like, want you to have nervous breakdowns. I find that they're actually different for everybody. Because whatever Begonia is giving me problems is not giving my sister down the road problems. Like, do you, do you see what there I'm saying? There you go, Julia. It's like everybody's, everybody's Begonia in their own home is completely different. That's because your ACs work different. Your dehumidifier in your ACs work different. The kind of heat you use. Speaking some people of that, have gas, some people have electric, and that all affects the microclimate of where you're keeping those. We found at. out that we, because we our our heater just went out, our air conditioning system, heat pump, <laughs> and we just had a new one put in last week, and we found out that you can adjust the amount of dehumidifying that your heater and your air conditioning system that they do. So we actually had it adjusted to where it didn't do quite as much dehumidifying. It may make it a little more uncomfortable in the summer. It might be a little bit humid in the house. But it will not be fighting against our humidifiers throughout the house for the plants. 
Okay, okay. Ancy My Plan says, what about Drag Race? Surely you guys are into that. Now, I watched the first, like, four seasons of Drag Race, and I haven't really watched it since. I'm guessing that's not a racing show. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's okay. not. But, oh, no, it's not. And Casey's never watched any of those shows, I'm sure you can all assume. But I freaking love Drag Race. My favorite uh, drag queens are Trixie Mattel, obviously. Obviously Katya. But those are kind of new favorites because my old favorites were Detox, obviously. And uh, Bob. Bob the Drag Queen because I love they make me freaking laugh and laugh and laugh. I love and by the way I love all those YouTube channels and I am down to clown 100%. So if y'all have any recommendations, What's drop them down here. Magdalene was looking beautiful, but I put a systemic poison <laughs> on them and they died. Oh no, where's that at? Right there, Nature Lover. Oh, put a systemic poison on them. And I they wouldn't died. do that again. Um, well, um, I put systemic in some of mine. Um, I did that when I first started, and I didn't have any of them die, so it could be the, the the specific type of systemic that you use. I wouldn't give it give up on systemic, but I don't think that begonias necessarily need them because most I have never seen a pest on any of my begonias. And that if you have seen a pest on your begonia, tell me in the comments because I'm interested. I've never seen a spider mite, a scale, a mealybug, nothing. And that's interesting because we that have had spider we've mites had all a lot. We've in a lot of plants, yeah. just not, and we got begonias mixed in with everything. <laughs> um, I just got my first Rex begonia Spitfire bleed. Any tips or advice to keep it happy? Love you guys, by the way. Thank you, Jessica Williamson. So, like I was saying earlier, three biggest tips for begonias: terracotta pot, water it when it's dry, and give it lots of light. They actually like a lot of light, a lot. Of light. I thought she filtered. I thought she had them. I lit. filtered my terrarium begonias that the are, terrarium begonias that are naturally a lower light type of okay. begonia. But most of the rexes, they want it. So does that usually work together? A terrarium begonia needs <laughs> less light. Not necessarily. What helps is to research the begonia that you buy and see what their natural habitat is like. So if they're naturally growing on rocky crags in a forest, then you know the light's very low. Yeah. If they're okay. out, you know, like they're more exposed or in a higher, you know, light intensity situation than put the light up. I think know? it's actually easier the way she does it because we don't get a lot of natural light in the house, so it's all artificial. So we have a rack, a shelf that has light, two rows of two racks above it. So that second rack down is always going to be a lesser light. So we just put those plants down there. It makes it easier. Um, not just Nits Niagara. I just asked, would you use diatomaceous earth on or around your begonias? Never. <laughs> Never use that. <laughs> He doesn't know what you're talking about. No. Um, I I know what DMT is. I've used it in the past with like other pest problems. Like in my in my life before plants, I used DMT and I never saw anything come of it. I used it outside in some tomato gardens and stuff like that. So I'm just not a big believer in it. And for the mess that it causes versus the results that I get from DMT, I'm just like, mm, no. You know what I mean? Like it just is messy. It's very messy and. But, you know, I find stuff with, like, I get, pes like, systemics if I need it for, like, phylos and anthuriums and stuff like that. Because I'm not eating it. So, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> one of mine keeps getting holes in the new leaves, and I've searched far and wide for a pest that might be doing it. From Morgan Stevens. So, sometimes leaves get holes in them for no reason. You know what I mean? Unless you see, like, some Maybe sort of... Maybe they are holy. <laughs> Maybe they have the, what's that called when you get the holes? What's that called? Stigmata. Holy. Maybe they got the stigmata. No, um, sometimes leaves just get holes, and I wouldn't worry about it unless you're seeing, like, some sort of bacterial color wave around the hole, suggesting that it's crawling, it's moving. It, if it's just a hole and it never gets any bigger, it's kind of like the mold that never gets bigger theory, right? Don't get it checked out if it doesn't get any bigger. Isn't that it? I don't ever go to the doctor. Don't ask me. Um, tropical seductions. Uh, Casey, can you grab that plant behind you with your right arm next to the red mushroom in the sphagnum moss? What is it? You know what that is, girl. I have an unboxing video. Don't you know it? Don't do it. <laughs> Casey said nothing to see here. Cody sent me that for an unboxing. You guys gotta wait to look at that I one. Put my big closer. noggin in the way. Cody said, How are you with alocasias? I'm good with them, but they just want to die because they consistently have spider mites. And it's 
almost intolerable and I have to keep them away from everything else. So systemics for sure. Now. And I've been lax. So <laughs> you can let them. I just don't want to give a close up. I don't want to give it away. That's terrible. Uh, why shouldn't you miss begonia leaves? If so, why? Um, I think you shouldn't probably miss them, but if you do miss them, make sure that they're heavily ventilated afterwards to where it just is going to air dry within minutes. Otherwise, I would just keep the water off the leaves in general. When I'm watering, I splash everywhere. I don't worry about if it gets on the leaf tip or whatever, especially if it's on ones that have really just have had for a really long time. I don't baby them as much, you know, but in general, just keep the water off the leaves, I would say. Um, am I talking fast enough for everybody? Does this sound manic? Is this a hundred percent manic? Cool. All right. Just making sure. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, there's a gentleman that doesn't realize we're married. Someone used the wrench. Uh, <laughs> okay. I took a couple of gas eggs just in case you were wondering <laughs> before we started, Julia. So, evidently it worked because I haven't killed over in Look, pain. Look, y'all, he will. He'll kill over in pain. Like, he we were worried. Some sort of a, got, we don't eat the best. We were, got some sort of we were worried that I would that my facial expression would make everyone think that I was some sort of psychotic, crazy person because uh, I was wincing all the time. My clean leaves and plants, pretty plants are on the case. <laughs> um, what do you use for fungal issues with your begonias? Luckily... I've never had a severe fungal issue up until this point. I've been keeping specialty begonias, not garden varieties, but specialty begonias for about a year. So I would say I think it's the lack of keeping water on the leaves and the high ventilation and everywhere in my house that's probably preventing powdery mold and probably preventing a lot of fungus issues. So, And also I don't have fungus gnats, so that prevents the spreading of things like that from plant to plant. So, um, let's see. Answer my plants. What's the guy over your head, Rachel? Varicosum? Are you talking about the this guy right here? That's the El Chaco Red. Right there. And he's going to be putting on a new leaf soon. So, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and distilled water. Yes, distilled water. But I only use distilled water for my terrarium begonias. I used to use it for my Rexes and Canes as well. But I quit doing that. And I haven't seen any problems. However, that's all about my city water, right? So your city water is different. Experiment with one plant if you don't oh, have problems. city water. City, what did I sound like I'm saying? Am I so southern that I said something different? Damn it. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <clears throat> Manic, oh my God. Um, do you have any velvety or rubbery begonias? Oh yeah, I've got, I've got just about all of them. So we showed you the escargot. We showed you... What would this be? Would this be rubbery? It's called now. This is the one I got you. This was the special one that surprised when you already forgot. I know. I know. Let me show you guys like. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Read the comments for a minute. Let me okay. show, let me show them how dry my other one is. My crypt my my, my <laughs> Christmas my Christmas cactus had powdery mold and I reported it. Now it's and I repotted it. I'm guessing. <laughs> now it's freaking out and all shriveled up. It's hard to read when you're nervous. Yeah. Um, Especially if you misspell it. You gotta <laughs> use spell check. Autocorrect will kill you and make me look like a fool. Uh, okay, so <laughs> this is a rubbery. Oh, sorry. Begonia that I have right here. It's uh, called your... a Begonia futoensis. The common name is the spider web begonia. The leaves are hella rubbery. They're just, they feel like little, what do they feel like, dear? Like little They feel stupid. <laughs> They feel like little, I don't know. They just feel like little rubbery pieces of plastic or something. You ever been to a trampoline park and they gave you the socks and they have the little rubber bits on the bottom of them? That's what they feel like. You're welcome. <laughs> what are you putting up here? Uh, let's see. Put poison up here. Uh, no, VA water, Squiddy Cakes VA water might as well be Chernobyl runoff. Oh. 100%. Um, How much? Plants, pots, and whatnots. How much is she freaking out about what Casey may say? She's so, doing really good right now, but she was freaking out about an hour before we started. And get, okay. just get, oh, she was true. reading me the riot act. I you did read him the riot um, act, and I said, this is what you can't say. This is what you can say. Evidently, I say a lot of offensive stuff through the normal course of conversation. A lot of editing happens. 
after we film. I'm just going to tell you that right now. A lot of editing happens. We're 40 minutes in. I think I've done quite well. I haven't said anything that you would feel like you have to edit out necessarily. Not yet. Not yet. No. Hey. I do make you look a lot faster on your wit because I cut out a lot of that dead space where you're going... I don't know about that. And you're thinking about what you're going to say? I, I don't <laughs> sit there and scratch my head for five minutes. Oh, I got it. Uh, Rachel, how much The jerk right store now? call like George did on Seinfeld. No. Uh, we, I do not need to own my own plant store, Nicole. Customer service is not my, I can do it. I feel like I can do customer service like no other, but I don't have the patience for it anymore as a 35 year old lady. I don't have time for it anymore. I've got four kids. I got YouTube. I got a husband. I don't have time to be nice to you. Like I have all my niceness that I have. I use up on the people immediately near me and people in like chat groups. I can't, I got nothing left for these strangers. I well, people that. are officially calling me Cletus, so that is... <laughs> Thank you, Cody, the crazy plant man. I was hoping that that uh, little pet name would go away on its own, but... Uh, if you guys saw our lot, or if you guys saw my Instagram story, I asked you guys, what did you think Casey's middle name was? And it was a multiple choice, and I put Cletus, and it's an option, and everyone thought his middle name was Cletus, because I keep telling everybody it is, but really, he doesn't have one. My so, middle name is... <laughs> It's nothing. So if you just fill it in with whatever you like, really, is what it My means. My parents' <laughs> philosophy was, we just thought you could pick one out when you got older. Are there, uh, from Riley Elizabeth, are there any places online that you've gotten begonias from? I've been looking at Steve's Leaves and Etsy, but I know there are a ton more out there. Yeah, Steve Le Steve's Leaves um, is a great place to go with. Logies is a good place to go with. But I would always go with a place that's got a return policy because if there's anything that doesn't like to be mailed, it's a begonia. So make sure whoever you're dealing with, they've got a great customer service policy. And pretty much that's the only people you want to deal with anyways because if they're going to ghost you, if the, something's wrong with the plant when it shows up, you don't want to deal with those people anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Teresa Romani said, I sold on eBay for a while and dealing with people's a nightmare. That's probably one of the main reasons that we haven't tried to do much of that because, you know, jeez. Pam's Pretty Plant says, I only hit Cletus to be a shit. I know he claims not to have one. Yeah, he's really working on having the whole world know. He's like, I'm embarrassed. It's Cletus. I don't want people to think it's a super southern middle name. Isn't that what you say? Cletus is all why, like mother, the Dukes of Hazzard. Why would you name me Cletus? <laughs> yeah. Why would you even think to, to, to give me that name? Because it's That's the worst the, name I can... If your name is Cletus, first of all, I would like to apologize for what I'm about to say. Uh, That's the dumbest name you could have given me. All right, look. When we first started dating, he was not ready for this. All of this that's coming at him, he wasn't ready for it, y'all. He wasn't raised around stuff like this. He wasn't ready. And I used Nor to was she ready for this. <laughs> we had to we had to pull back a layer at a time. I used to call him whatever it. girl C name I could think of. So I'd be like, You ready to go, Chrissy? Come on, Christine. You're taking forever. And he would legit be taken aback a little bit because he would be like, Is what is this woman doing? So, it was a nightmare. It's because it wasn't funny. I tried to explain to her that everything she says is not funny. She tells me that. That's uh, our biggest insult. We could just tell them that that's not funny. And not just Miss Niagara said week. Cornelius. I think I think Cornelius sounds good, too. Uh, Barbara said her hound dog's name is Cletus. That's perfect name for a hound dog. Totally agree. You You're saying I ain't nothing but a hound dog? You, you ain't. You gonna sing it? No, I'm not gonna sing it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, uh, Nicole, he wasn't ready. No, he wasn't. He wasn't ready. Um, yeah, when we first got together, there were so many hardcore miscommunications between the two of us. And I mean hardcore. Let's start with the fact that, you know how I call you guys plant hoes? And there was a couple of people who had a really pro a big problem with that. Like, a big problem with it. They were it. not calling you promiscuous or prostitutes or anything of that nature. Well, I could potentially call you that in private, but what I'm saying is, is that it's a it's a pet name. It's a pet name. It's for a dual you. meaning word. Right. So whenever like we started dating, I would say I mean, he'd call and I'd answer the phone and I'd be like, "What are you doing, you dirty slut?" And he would just sit there and not respond. Dead air. And I was like, "Are you okay?" And he was like, "I'm just not really." Well, what's the appropriate response to that? <laughs> I'm not a slut. I'm just, he would say, he would politely say, I'm just not really used to people talking to me like that. He's used to it now. We've been together for a really long time. 
It doesn't phase him now. I've called him every single name it under the sun. It phases me still. It does not. Not as bad. Not. Does it really? It, it, sometimes you catch, which depends on what mood you catch me in when you call oh, me certain things. Oh, when you're things. really sensitive and yeah. I call you or names. Or when I'm, if my mind is on something else and you say it, then I take it literal and I'm like. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. I am a domestic abuse Person. All the verbal I'm, abusing, I'm abusing my husband what, with, with that. Yeah. Dirty plant hose. Get it right. Dirty. Sorry. Dirty plant hose. Yeah. So when I'm talking to you guys, it's so affectionate. Like I, when I when he comes home, I'm like, what's up, you dirty hoe? You know. So it's just. She calls me dirty hoe all the time. All the so y'all are getting a pet name. It's a, a play pet off name. of a pet name she right. has for me. Right. Dirty plant hose. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect meant. Christy Bim said, one of my doctor's names is Bocephus. And that wins. That wins the most ridiculous southern name of all, for sure. Um, so, Lara said, I love your pet names. Debbie Lum is so funny. Your parents said you could just pick your own middle name. They did. They said that to him. And he still has yet to pick it. But I think we're working on Cletus. Sounds like a run, number one runner-up. Um... <laughs> Are you doing it? How's your belly? It's doing really good. Are you so nervous? I that haven't rained you out of the room. It's, oh my God. I don't want to ask what that means. <laughs> um, See, that would normally get edited out of a video. So Very, very dirty plant host, to be Ooh, honest. I feel empowered so now. True. I just realized so I feel like I can say whatever I want to say, and the editor is not going to <gasps> chop it up and make me say something different or take it out altogether. Sometimes your jokes don't hit, Casey. Oh man, I feel the I feel the power. Do you hear me? Yeah. Sometimes you your hear jokes me? don't hit, and that's okay. That's okay. I'm glad I'm here to help you Boy, edit that God. stuff out. <laughs> my jokes don't hit my butt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> OMG, the flags are going. Oh no, that's terrible. I don't know. I'm so proud of your sphincter control, Casey. Aww. It's not so much that. It's it's the it's the uh, it's the it's area. Not it's, the, that. it's the it's not that. It is all the parts before that that it's just kind of <laughs> swirling around in. Oh, doesn't want to. Oh my god. Proceed. Oh my god. Uh, I like being a dirty plant hoe. Is what peaceful planter said. I'm so glad. Look. When we first started messing around, when I first started my channel, I was saying, what's up, plant nerds? And it was completely linear thinking with Not Dude. I found his channel after the fact. I felt completely terrible, but I also felt like I was, you know, like I had, I didn't know what to do. So I tried out Plant Mommies Boom. at one point because yeah. I like the, the podcast. Um, you know, your mom's house. So I thought, oh, they say, what's up, mommies? I was like, plant mommies, that's cool. Yeah, it sounds Every stupid when they do it too. Buddy hated it. Absolutely hated it. We had it. one person say, I like plant mommies. <laughs> yeah, one person gave me some, some stuff, but you Thank know. Thank God that didn't stick. <laughs> Jeez. Yes, the Not Dude is amazing. If you haven't, My Clean Leaves has an amazing channel. Pam's Pretty Plant has an amazing channel. If any of you guys are just viewers and not creators, you need to click on some of these icons. There are a lot of creators in here, and their stuff is absolutely amazing. Actually, Pam's Pretty Plants inspired me to do this live because I've been way too chicken for way too long. Yeah. And Nicole from My Clean Leaves helped me to schedule it because I am not very smart. When she gets nervous, she gets out. a little bit... <sighs> I talk a lot. We could do up. this for a while. I can talk all day, gum day. Um, We're supposed to be talking about begonia care. Oh, yeah. Begonias, if anyone's got anything. Um, let's see. <laughs> Catherine said, I like being a plant nerd. I know you like being a plant nerd, but... You still are. You still are, and absolutely. You can be anything you want to be, but I just didn't want anyone to feel like I was, con you know, like taking content or anything like that. I wanted to be as, as original as absolutely possible without, you know, there's some unavoidable uh, uh, originality issues, obviously, but I wanted to try to be as original as possible. Yeah, everybody's so. copied this on the show and the plants part. That was, <laughs> no, it wasn't on it. But, you know, I mean, I get it because... Because my Nana didn't really like it 100% either, but, yeah. but she was cool with it because, you know, at the end of the day, they love me and they just want me to be myself. And that's that's me, unfortunately. This this dumpster fire that you're looking at right here is me. So, you know, that's that's what you're going to do. Um, <laughs> we love your dumpster fire. 
most of the time. I don't know. Do I say little, dirty little plant host? I don't know. I'm yeah. so used to speaking to just like, whatever. I don't know what I'm doing. When it, By the way, when I'm filming, it's a car accident. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm so nervous when I'm filming. I'm glad that you guys think that I look chill. I am not chill. She is not. Not no. at all. I get, I sweat. I have to change a shirt sometimes because it's just, it's overwhelming. I don't like being in front of the camera. You guys wouldn't believe that because I have a channel. But before I started this channel, you couldn't take a photo of me or I'd be pissed. She wouldn't post anything on social media of you herself. You know, I didn't like it. She, so. yeah. When she told me she was going to start a, a, a YouTube channel, I thought she was joking. No way. Oh, what's up, Teresa? What's up? Mm, yeah, not squiddy cakes. Not ready for motherhood, so I'll stick to dirty plant hoe. Absolutely. If you have a, even the slightest inkling that you're not ready for motherhood, don't do it, bro. Yeah. Don't do it. It's an 18-year sentence. You take them right. Once it, it starts, it finishes. Yeah. There's no early commuting of it. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Nana. I know, I know. And she loves my videos, too, which makes it really... It's one of them things. What are you going to do, you know? Um, that being said, we love our children. <laughs> Pam, you're my favorite dumpster <laughs> fire. <laughs> you said that, but I thought you were saying it. Um, what did Cody say? Pam and Nicole freaking rock. You're absolutely right, they do. Um, oh, let's say Riot <laughs> Pooh. Pie from San Francisco, Rachel and Casey. You're my favorite channel. I'm a dirty plant hoe for show. Dirty plant hoes for life. Hashtag all day, every day. Lori Jack Crawford, Ryan. more than 18 years. Yeah, I'm just kind of wishful <laughs> thinking on that. You know, I'm rounding Yeah, it. I know he always says that, and I get wishful thinking. I'm like, so 18 we can... 18 gets you out of your bare minimum requirement, but, you know, you got to still... Yeah, I ask, so we can move after that, right? So, like, we can just pack up one mm -hmm. day at night when no one's paying attention and leave, and then they're going to be fine, right? Yeah, the probably not. Oh, well, that, was to get them that to makes that me hilarious. That makes me laugh because everybody thought that I was maybe a nurse when I did that Instagram uh, quiz that I did the other day, and I laughed so hard, y'all, so hard because I do have a good side ma bedside manner with my family, but like we covered before, oh man, I ain't got the patience for randos, not at all, y'all. Why do you think I stay at home all the time? I can't handle people. Customer service these days is dead y'all it's dead so you know what i'm saying what's the deal with rex begonias why do they hate us <laughs> rex begonias why do they hate us i think that um i think that a lot of people just kind of misunderstand rex begonias so what can what can i say i give my rex begonias as much light as i would an alocasia a lot of light i put it directly under a grow light i give it water when it's dry and then, you know, I just play its own, play, I play its game, right? I play its game. So don't let the begonia stress you out. Just, just kind of observe it. Keep a spreadsheet if you need to, to kind of watch, did I do this? Was I successful? What are you laughing at? A spreadsheet? What's so funny about that? That sounds like something I would say. Do you have a spreadsheet on any of your plants? I can learn without having a spreadsheet. Maybe some people I just can. wanted to clarify that. She doesn't have a spreadsheet on anything. <laughs> You're going to get on my nerves. She knows how to use them. I'm about she to kick you the hell out of to. here. You're about to be gone. <laughs> we do not have a begonia luxurian, but it sounds cool. No, I don't have a begonia luxurian. Yeah, and I really, really want it. Um, People suck. <laughs> We're now stating the obvious. <laughs> Bye, Nicole. Um, yeah, dude. I'll make you a spreadsheet. Yeah, you guys, with the begonias, here's the deal. Here's the deal, Pickle. So, when I first started, everything was too far back from the window, right? Way far back right here. And not <coughs> only that, but every begonia thing that I read online was, keep them moist. The roots like to be moist. Do not let them dry out. Moist, 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 moist. And I'd just be going by it all the time, just pouring water and pouring water and pouring water. And they died so fast, you guys. They just don't want that much water. They really don't. And I was supposed to be getting another begonia. What did I do? Oh, I I'm putting together a begonia care video, you guys. And I'm, I'm putting together some time-lapse videos so that you guys can see exactly how dry I let them get. Now, don't kill them. Don't get, let them get that dry. Don't come to me and say, you said let it dry out with your crispy <laughs> pitcher. I'm saying let it talk to you a little bit before you water it. Let it droop a little bit because they will. And I'm going to show you what a dramatic droop some of these plants can do on my next 
real, you know, step-by-step -step care video that I put out for begonias. The problem is you have to keep an eye on it because once they start to droop, you can't just let that continue. <laughs> Later, taters. Bye, Nicole. Thank you so much for your help. I appreciate you so much. Guys, you guys have a great night. Um, how's the Darth Vader, Rihanna? I took it out just a minute ago and I showed. Um, it has grown a new leaf. <laughs> yeah. And the old leaves are dead. Leaf. Yeah, That's the old leaves are it. dead. Oh, and my little stem propagation. Let me show you guys that really quick. You can answer a question. Or so two. the one we got from the, the video thumbnail says from Thailand. It's actually not from Thailand. It's from somewhere else over there in Asia. But uh, the one we got from there, uh, My Home Nature, I think is where we got that from. It showed up looking good, but it came in a Ziploc bag. And it was wet and very lots of moisture in the bag. And the leaves were all touching it, which as we discussed earlier, they don't like. So yeah. all those leaves died, and it just turned to mush right off the bat. So she cut a stem, yeah, dropped it in water. So let me show you guys that and here. Make sure that doesn't fall. I'm going to show these guys. Let's see. That's what he said. Insert gift of Backstreet Boy. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> so here you guys see this is, I don't even know if you can see it. My Clean Leaves is going to miss her little debut. Can you guys see that little tiny growth point there? You guys see it? Yeah, guys. Yeah. It's it's like that. Yeah. So, it's got a little growth point. There may be something. The leaf, whatever leaves were on top here have already fallen off. They're gone. It's over for them. So, we'll see how it goes. It may go well. It may not. We'll see. What am I holding this one for? <clears throat> I wanted to show you guys this. Speaking of the Darth Vader Rihanna, if any, guys, if any of you guys are experimenting with it right now, you should really, I suggest pairing it up with another begonia because I had so much trouble with my Darth until I gave it a, a dome partner, you know, and don't ask me why it helps. Don't ask me the science behind it, but they don't, help? they don't want to be alone. You just said don't ask. So I did. That's all I was Yeah. Doing. Well, that's how much sense sick. you get after that question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. <laughs> I was born in the 80s, no excuse. Yeah, 90s baby there for ants in my plants. I was born in 84, so I liked Rainbow Bright, Strawberry Shortcake, ALF. What else did I watch? Oh, I watched all the old stuff too. <clears throat> Little House on the Prairie. Yep. You know what I mean? All that stuff, man. I was born slightly before that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why there's no super chat. I have no idea why that's not enabled. So maybe next time we do a live, you'll be able to do that. I have no clue. We'll have to research a little bit more. My bad. Sorry, you guys. I wish you could give me money, but you can't. My bad. <laughs> but anyways, so this is my Chlorosticta right here. This is the green form that I've been working on. It really struggled when it first came and I bleached a lot of the leaves out at first. But now it's actually got a female and some male flowers there. So it's looking really nice. And this is like the terrarium buddy that I had it in with for a long time in the beginning. And it just seemed to like, as soon as it had a friend, it did so much better. So, you you know, whatever. That makes sense whatever. to me. Whatever. Typical. Typical it doesn't, whatever. Typical doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> That's her feeble attempt at Dr. Evil. Feeble? I mean, that's uh, her I've perfect spinal and rendition. I have had enough. I have had enough. My kids were born in the 90s. Lori, you look wonderful. You look wonderful. <laughs> um, How can you tell if it's male or female flower? Did someone ask that? Yeah. Okay. Alicia Moore. Okay. So this right here is our female because you can just consider this like a little egg sec. Right, this is where she keeps all her goodies in here and whatnot. And these are the little male flowers, and this is where the little pollen pollen comes from. How can you tell though? You're just saying it. How, <laughs> how do you know by looking at it? Because do you not see the difference? This one's like a little orb of a circle, and this one's got this big, huge, like sack hanging off. Oh, I of thought it. it was just one small and one's little big. Not everybody's a fast learner, you guys. Oh, that's for the doctor evil comment, ain't it? <laughs> not everybody's a fast learner. Let's see. Um, that looks so cool. I was born in 1958. Tammy, you're crazy, girl. That's a long time ago to be born. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I think that's when my mom, around the time when my mom was born. So, no big deal. 
Um, do you plan on coming out with a begonia propagation video? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I try, I try to make my videos entertaining, and I think I lose a little bit of the informative bit. Yeah. But I think we try not to script, overly script it, yeah. and it ends up getting off the topic <coughs> a little bit. And we get off the mark. We a forgot bit. to talk about the actual cutting. <laughs> sorry and, uh, about coughing in your face, my bad. Do you mind? I'm sorry. Can I was you get coughing. that out of here? <laughs> um. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Casey likes to have his back scratched with those long nails. He yells all the damn time, you guys. This is what I live with. He yells consistently. Am I yelling? Yeah. The big, huge sack. And some of my plants. Yeah, did you see the big, huge sack hanging off of it? Oh, the big flower. <laughs> you got to be specific. You don't know where my mind's going to go with what you're talking about. <laughs> Um, the name of Noel, the name of this begonia is called a begonia chlorosticta green form. That's what I just showed you guys on the camera. Um, does Casey like his back scratched with those long nails? I just answered that. Oh, my bad. No, I'm it's sorry. okay. It's okay. I bet I'm you sorry. Can... I'm trying to read and it's like, my bad. You're such a psycho. Oh my God. I'm just kidding. You can answer it again. I was just giving you <coughs> Yes, I do. So <laughs> I'm just Winston. kidding, Tammy. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, gotta watch Homeland. We have not hybridized anything yet, but she's trying to play Hi, around Lauren. with it. Have fun watching your show. Because both the red and the green form Chlorosticta are flowering. So no. she's. No. Uh, sorry. Huh? I'm bad. Oh. I'm reading. Like, while you're talking. You're answering things I mean. that you've read, but you hadn't said. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Lyra said, am I the only 70s baby? No, Casey's a 70s baby. Right here. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we got a, I got a bone to pick with I you people. I can't believe How many it took this here? long. 167 people. All right. If you guys participated in the Instagram quiz that I had going on, and you, I gave you the options for Casey's age. 38. 40, 42, uh -huh. and 47. And you know what you guys, the majority of y'all said? 38, okay? Well, none of those are the actual right number. Well, I was rounding up. Okay. Okay, so then we go over. I was rounding up to make you seem older. And then we go to the next frame, and then I'm like, how old do you guys think I am? Like 29, which is the youngest thing I would put on there. 30, 32, and 35. Because I was thinking, I'm not going over 35 because I'm not letting everybody ruin my damn day. And then everybody comes back and they're like, Casey looks 38. Thank you very much. Are I appreciate you that. kidding me? Yeah, if I, if I did a little just for men on the beard, I might could go for 37. <laughs> y'all are crazy. Y'all need glasses. <laughs> <coughs> but y'all picked her name accurately. The majority of everyone... Not my name. They picked her, my not age. Her age. The majority of you picked her age accurately. And she was upset about no, 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 it. No, 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 I wasn't upset yeah, about yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was upset to how low they guessed your number. They guessed me spot on. That? Like, oh, yeah. How dare y'all <laughs> give my husband a compliment? Yeah, seriously. Seriously. You're, like, she's really bad because y'all didn't underguess her age. You underguessed my age. You going to respond to that? Boomer sooner. <laughs> Leah Melton. Yeah, so, no. That's not Absolutely okay, Boomer. Not. That's Boomer sooner. There is a difference. We're a house divided, by the way. When we got married, I was an Arkansas um, Razorback fan. Okay. Technically, we're still a house divided. Is that what you're going to say? You said you were in our, you were, I thought you said we were in. No, no, I was an Arkansas fan. How about fan. I stop interrupting and let her finish her sentence? That would be a good idea. I'd appreciate it. I'm going to burp in the middle of my sentence now. Sorry, She's an guys. Arkansas fan. It's live. We live in Arkansas. <coughs> I grew yeah. up in Oklahoma. Yeah. So yeah. we are a house divided. But I am kind of just giving up on the Arkansas bit because I never watched any sports or anything like that. That was just something that I did when I grew up. I called the hogs. I was woo pig suey. That's what my papa taught me to do. Woo pig, pig suey. Oh, suey. I thought it was shooey. I ain't having that on my channel. I am not having she that on my channel. She can't edit it out. Oh. <laughs> Lindsay loves leaves. I'm in Clinton. You're very close to us. What's yep. up? Uh, yeah, peanuts plants. She was telling me in that in the chat the other day that her husband loves it when they think that they're around the same age and they're 11 years difference also. So he gets a real big you kick better watch it. All the math experts are going to find out how old I am. I am not gray, you guys. Look at all the gray in his beard. I dye my hair, though, so y'all are just assuming my hair is super gray. I get it. I get it. All right. 
She don't get it. <laughs> Y'all fighting is so cute. I can't believe this is what this has devolved into, but I kind of had a feeling like it would go that way. Oh, by the time we say begonia again. <coughs> begonia. Let's see. <laughs> and some of you were really, really sweet too because some of you didn't even answer and they just popped in my uh, inbox and they were like, I'm not answering this. Because you look 19, and I was like, bless you, my child. Bless you, my child. And if I wasn't following them, I was following them after that. I can yeah. tell you that. <coughs> That's not obvious. <laughs> Mike and I are the same age. Yeah, I've never dated anyone that was the same age as me, which is so weird. It was either younger, when I was younger. So I dated some younger guys when I was younger. And then I dated nothing but older when I got older. Because no one has time for children. You know, no one has time for children. But Mike, you and Mike are the same age and you're both older. So it's not like, you know, you're 20 and he's 20. Also, Mike seems like a really good guy. And y'all seem like an amazing couple. And when I was watching your live last night, I got really excited when I heard him come home. Because I was like, yay, maybe he's going to join the live. But he didn't. So Who's I this one? I was, I was reading that list. Of... Tattooed Pam. Okay. Her husband, or not her husband, but her boyfriend Mike came home. And I thought he was going to get on live with her. <coughs> Nikki says, Jordan is six years younger than I am. Rubs it in my face constantly. He's a gem. He sounds like a gem. Yeah, I wouldn't tolerate that for sure. I would threaten him that he has to sleep sometime. And that that's when the attack might come. Is when he's unconscious. So, um, I sleep with one eye open. <coughs> There's going to be a lot of southern relationship advice in this one, you know. You guys yes, this does feel like a little bit like construction paper. Begonia advice. Also relationship advice, you know. Um, Casey, do you love the Dallas Cowboys? Why, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and it is quite frustrating that they suck so bad. Um, not just Nitz Niagara. What begonia will you never try with again? Oh, and Sassy and Seclant said, I said 21. Yes, girl, you were very sweet to me that day. I appreciate that. It was a rough day. Uh, Casey getting all the love that day was not helpful. Um, uh, <laughs> so what begonia we're we not going to try again? Um, I am a sucker for trying everything a billion times, so I can't really say that. Matter of fact, if I can't do it, I'm more motivated to do it again, just to, just to prove it to myself and to everyone else that She's stubborn. That I can grow That's it. what she's saying, is she's stubborn. very stubborn. I'm very stubborn. Um, I'm 25, but think, people think I'm 15, so when I walk my dog in the morning, I always get asked why I'm not in school. <laughs> that is super helpful, and when you get older, you're really going to appreciate that bit. <laughs> Um, I'm 34. I already see more than two gray hairs. Yeah, I only have like one. No, you guys. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to say this on a live. I got my first goat hair. Do you know what that is? Yeah. It's like the wiry. It's the wiry hair. whisker hair that your grandma has. <coughs> right. So, <gasps> nobody has that in my family. This is on a video that I can't edit things out on. But anyways, I got a goat hair and it's right here. It's on my lip. So, I'm not getting the grays, but I'm getting some very strange other happenings on other parts of my body. Pluck them. I do pluck them, my friend. Um, do you pollinate from that chloristicta? Yes, I do. And I'm actually right now drying out a um, red chloristicta pollen um, male flower. I'm drying it out a little bit to make it easier to get the pollen to the bloom. And then I'm going to be trying to make a hybrid from those two, but it hasn't happened yet. And I don't Plant know if it'll be successful. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I've always dated a couple year, years older. Yes, totally. Jason is 30 and I'm 27. So not a huge difference, but my ex was four years older than me. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're a young girl out there and you're looking for a man and you're not committed or anything like that, if you have a pool of men to choose from, and this is just my advice, totally my advice, but if you had a pool of men to choose from, and there's ages, you're, let's say you're 30, right? Or you're 25, and the pool of men is like uh, 22, uh, 25, 30, and 35. Go for the 35. Always go for the 35. Because that guy is going to know more than all those other guys put together. Just by default. Even if he's an idiot, he's going to know more. <laughs> Just by default because he's been here longer. Anyways. <coughs> Girl, I've got one of those goat hairs on my chin. Kara S. Girl, it's coming out of my lip. 
That is a rude spot. If it was on my chin, I could probably lie and say it was like something stuck to my face if someone saw it, but on my on my upper lip, there's no hiding from that. <coughs> she said, I promise to still love you during football season. Go Eagles. Hi, Eagles fan. Oh, my God. Eagles fans in the chat. You need to play oh, some sexy man. time music. <laughs> we'll have to edit all that out before we post it yeah, later. Yeah, play it porn. Thanks to Sherry. I hope we age well. Maturity level, you become the same if you pick an older guy. I will say thank you, yeah. Eagles fans, for running away <laughs> Andy Reid and getting him out of the conference in our division. Yeah. Oof. But the 35-year-old hasn't got it right yet. Absolutely happy little bush, but he's closer. He's closer to the goal. You're saying there's not any 35-year-old idiot man out there. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying at all. That's what it sounds like you're saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that if you're going to have to invest time into a project, which is what you guys are, let's be real. Okay? Oh, if you're going to invest your time, can be fun. then you want to start out with something that someone else, or at least three or four other girls, have at least tried at least four or five different things on. And maybe they're a little softer and ready to be molded. Who knows? I know a 35-year-old <laughs> idiot. See? <laughs> See? It's not a hard clad um, rule, obviously. Um, are you going to the IAS convention? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Our air conditioning. What's the IAS convention? Um, International Aeroid Show. Oh. So our air conditioning unit know. went out, and we had to pay a pretty penny to get that repaired. And then our... It was quite ugly. Then one of our cars in the family, one of our kids' cars needed to be repaired. So we're not 100% sure if we're going to go to that yet, but we're going to try. We're going to try. <coughs> Teresa says, I've dated some very immature older men. Totally true. Totally true. And you can usually tell right off the bat. You can immature is not necessarily bad, depending, depending on <coughs> what areas of life they're immature in. Y'all have made me laugh so hard. I've got the I'm coughing now. I'm so sorry. Um... Yeah, get them young so you can mold them into your liking. There is something to be said for that also, but only if they're moldable. Not all are moldable. And plus, really, they're, they're just going to make so many mistakes. It's just going to happen. Do you yeah. want to be there for I never all make that? mistakes in our relationship at my age. <laughs> just get cats. It's easier. 100%. 100%. Um, investing in a project. Yes. Men never mature. I didn't say Casey was mature by any means. By <laughs> any means of the imagination. <coughs> In fact, here's what it's like to wake up with Casey. Have you ever had a two-year-old? Are you moms out there or anything like that? Three, four, not four, about four. He can not feed himself. Say, he can two, feed you're himself. Taking a little he can too feed far. himself. When he wakes up in the morning, it's immediate. He is on. He's ready. He's go you have like a three or four-year-old that just goes and goes and goes when they wake up. That's what it's like being married to Casey. I may have Never hyperactivity disorder. Until he goes to bed at night. That's why I say, yes, he's a good guy, but I sleep really, really, really good at night. Because I'm tired. That was not a... I'm, no. I'm, I'm tired from Boy, putting up with the I'm with proud the of craziness. myself for holding that comment please, back. Please, jeez, please. Oh, my God. Man, I'm proud. <coughs> <clears throat> I want to go to the IAS so bad. Pam... I want to go too. I really, really do. And I feel like I, if I have to miss out on the IAS again, the FOMO will make me recede into a dark plant corner for, for I probably won't release a video for a we're, week. We're going to try to put start putting some money back to kind of prepare for it. But. <laughs> yeah, expensive heating and cooling. Absolutely, Sherry. It was for the whole house. It sucks. <laughs> and it snuck up on us because the heater only malfunctioned on the really cold nights. The, the, uh, the electric heating element wouldn't come on, and it stunk. It got like 59 degrees in here. I thought I woke up, and I thought, oh, crap, all of our plants are dead. Here we go. Yeah, for real. It got so cold, you guys. I about couldn't go to the bathroom and come back to bed. It was bad. You could hear the pee, ice, the pee crystals <laughs> plumping into the toilet water. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's funny. It's like some people in the chat feel like you should get them young and then mold them. And then some people feel like you should get a more mature guy and try like that. That's funny. It's just my own experience. I can't, I literally can't have a conversation with someone that's younger than me or my age with a man. Like imagine, like Casey can't take part in this conversation because he doesn't like any hypothetical scenario of me doing anything like that. But if I was to be on a date with someone who was 35 years old, I wouldn't have anything to talk about him with. I would be, I, there you go. That's a good boy. 
That's a good boy. You know what? We're so bad. We're so jealous that we went to, we're just so emotional about each other that we went to go watch Braveheart the other day. We got literally <laughs> five minutes into it. We were both bawling, crying. Nothing bad had happened. We were crying. We were both bawling, crying, and we shut it off. I was not crying. We, he was definitely crying. Nope. Um... <laughs> Uh, at least I'm space not Space heater. There we got a space heater person. Absolutely. Space heaters are the bomb. We've got a few of those laying around too. Let's see. Carolyn Razor said, any plants you're scared to give a try? I'm always timid to buy a cutting that I don't, that don't have any roots. Um, yeah, I don't really like buying cuttings necessarily. That's, I've sent out cuttings to my friends and things like that. And they don't, they don't always go the way they're supposed to go. So I think I've experimented with that. I've learned my lesson. I think anything else that I send out from here on out will be a rooted cutting and not being set in the middle of winter time. So I don't hurt yeah, We learned a hard lesson on that one. I learned a hard one. lesson on that one. So, um, put on your own Aeroid show. Yeah, right. There is nobody here that would come to anything like that. <clears throat> uh, hi. Here's the problem with going to the Aeroid show because we've talked about it. It's not just Hi getting... guys, Peter oh. North here, old porn star, great stream tonight. I, I you think that that's Peter North? Do you think that's Peter North in the comment section? Hmm, I wonder. I was talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad. She was so that was, a, was that in, was a pretty funny sentence. I was in mid sentence. Go ahead. I said the problem with going to the Arrowhead show is she's going to want to buy something down there, and then <laughs> she's going to get in some crazy bidding match. If you've ever watched the Seinfeld where Elaine was going to buy. Mr. Peterman, some golf clubs from JFK, and then she was bidding on it against the uh, O. Henry Candy Bar heiress, Jack, Sue Ellen Mischke, and then they're both bidding it up like to $20,000. Rachel's going to find a plant she wants that Kaylee Ellen wants, and then they're going to both be going, eh, eh. I could not believe you said Kaylee Ellen. Okay, what are you talking about? Look. And then I'm going to come back broke. I'm going to say I'm, I'm stuck in Florida and I can't get home. That's what I'm worried about. Here's the deal. You guys. Correct what I said. That was wrong. I just saw her winning a lot of stuff, and I want to win some stuff, too. And all I'm saying is that if I go to play the sluts, I go to play the sluts, and I bring the cash. That means slots. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying. You know what I mean? And what's it say? So? So what if I want to go down there and flex a little bit? You know what I mean? Like, what's wrong with flexing? Well, what's wrong with flexing is if you can't flex as much as the other person, you get nothing. There's no way. <laughs> or they decide to pull the rug out from under you Look, once it gets expensive. I've got four kids. There is no way I'm out flexing Kaylee Ellen. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure what she does for a living, but I guarantee you it don't involve four kids and an air conditioning unit. I know that. So she's going to come down there. With, and a broke down truck. She's going to look like the Hulk when she shows up. She's going to be covered in green. That was very mean. She's going to have just dollar bills just stuffed on every, just poor. She she's going to have little rolls of dollar bills up. coming out of her ear. Jeez Louise. Yes. Sidetrack. <laughs> We have very little to flex too. These are all these are all pipe dreams that we're talking about, you guys. You down. guys, I just love it. It's all a pipe dream. Um, <laughs> Kaylee's arm don't bend is what I heard. Yeah, I heard that too. She <laughs> and you know, here's the deal. That's because I had a couple of uh, people who were in my DMs after the last Aeroid show. Here's the real tea on that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Old smoker's lungs from back in the day. Um, people were upset. Not going to lie. People were a little upset. There were some people there who were bidding on some things that Kaylee Ellen outbid them on. And I got to hear about it in my DMs, which, you know, it's no big deal or anything. But hey, that's, what, that's why that's I was what like, is. That's what that's why I, was, is. I know, it's totally understandable. I totally get it. But that's why I have, like, the daydreams. In my daydreams, I walk in and I've got, like, a Louis Vuitton purse. And I'm wearing like those red bottom heels. Oh, and I'm like 120 pounds. Obviously, I'm way thinner than I am right now. And then I just walk in and like the wind's blowing through my hair. And then I pull out like a big fat wallet and I'm like, there's no need to have an auction today. You can just put them all in the truck. And now you know why I'm <laughs> concerned about going to the Aeroid show. Jeez. <laughs> Scares me. <laughs> bye, Nikki. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, the tea was good on that one. Everybody was talking about that. But, you know, hey, man, if I was Kaylee and I had the money, I'd be going down there and I'd be stunting on all of them, too. 
So I ain't hating on her a bit for doing that. I think it was amazing. I think it's cool that people were talking about her, how she was stunting down there. Good for her. Good for her. We're gonna try. We're gonna if we come, we're gonna try to bring a little flex, <laughs> but we may have to wait and come in like five years so we can save up. Okay, Chris says, any tips on angel wing begonia that its leaves drop? Um, the only time I've noticed leaves actually dropping off were didn't water it in time or watered it too much. And I think that would what would aid you in that with your begonia's leaves is to use a water meter. Are you currently using a water meter? Just curious, maybe we can get further into that one. Um, <laughs> thank you for getting us back on topic also, Chris. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Kaylee was smashing dreams that day. I wanna smash some people's dreams too. I'm all about that lifestyle, you know what I mean? I am, I can't help myself. This is who I am, all right? I would like to smash, I would. Can I? Do you, is it anybody in particular or just in general? You just want to feel... Nobody in you particular. Want, you I just, just want the feel feeling about bidding somebody and getting the plant you want. Well, yeah. Haven't you ever seen that Seinfeld episode? That's exactly how... She yeah. wants to do it because... She wants yeah, to take a victory lap. Uh, like I do when I beat her at pool. I like to take a little victory <laughs> lap around the pool table and put the cue stick under my arm and just kind of strut around like I'm carrying a flag or something. <laughs> She I will. It. I'll get the super chat fixed so you guys can help me out. We will probably, if this live goes well, which it seems to have gone really well, thank you guys so much for coming tonight. I can't, literally can't thank you guys enough. 144 people in a live chat for our first live. Amaze. Amazing. I and thought you guys, we were going to have like 800, and she thought we were going to have so like five. Full. He's full so, of shit. Hey. Don't listen to him. What he's saying is thank you. That's what he meant thank to you. say. Wow. I was I just I know it. you're being silly. I know I'm being silly with you. Yeah. Calm down. She's Cletus. getting worried. Here I go off the rails. Calm down. Cletus. Um I use mine all the time. Well, if you use the water meter all the time, I'm not sure if that was the same. Can't live without it. Yeah, that water meter for begonias especially, you need it. You need it. And I'd let it go all the way in the red. Don't mess around, moist, yada yada yada. No. Dry. Let it dry. Let that thing dry out. Ooh, Kara said she put a uh, Rex begonia in Lekka yesterday, and she wants to see what happens. Super curious to see how that goes. I've never done something with Lekka like that yep. before. We've got our new aquaponics <sighs> set up. We're going to be experimenting a lot with that in the Lekka, but I've never done just begonias in Lekka anyways. So, so we are finally going to combine the aquaponics <laughs> that I did, the big aquaponics, with a small aquarium and houseplants and see what we can get to work and what works and what doesn't work. Um, Sumac the Unicorn said, I have a black, black speckling on my angel wing begonia. I also lost four leaves this morning. Have you ever experienced that with yours? No, but if I was going to try to diagnose something like that, I would say it's probably fungal and that you probably needed to treat it. You know, you know how they have like, um, you know those little tiny fans that you can get like desk fans or something? If you have like a rack you're keeping your plants on, maybe just clip that to it and make sure your begonias get a lot of air. They really like the ventilation. Not too much air. You don't want them do, doing that, you know, and acting crazy just and stuff right. like that. But just a little bit. Just a little bit. Bye, Reb. Have a great night. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Lars, Liz, we want to see the aquaponics. Absolutely. And we are going to make a video dedicated to that. We know it's probably not going to be everyone's, um, you know, tea and crumpets or whatever, but we're going to put it out there for the information just so yeah. that if you want to try it, you can try it because it's what we're trying. I'm experimenting with some rare philodendrons because well, I want to see what kind of leaf growth I can get with fish poo. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's just a little variation of <laughs> like semi-hydro. It's still growing it in Lekka, water. Just the nutrient source and, you know, where you stick the planter at. Bye, sassy and succulent. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for coming. Yes, airflow, absolutely. Where did you get your red chlorosicta? I have the green form, but I can't for the life of me find a seller who has a red form. So I got mine from a seller called mountainorchids.com. And they're very hard to find when they're in stock and I, I just happened across it one night at 2 a.m. He happened to have them up and I snagged one. So and I'm also in a group with some other people that buy from Mountain Orchids and they they send a message when the restock happens. So try to get out there socially yeah. so you know when the restock is coming. What I do, how I found some of her plants is I just <coughs> pop on to some of the websites, you know, a couple times a week just randomly. And sometimes 
you catch them before they're you know you catch something that gets updated that you don't know about and you can you can sneak in on a on a plant just randomly. I found one on NS a couple on NSC that way, and it was not a restock day. It was just boom, this plant showed yeah. up. Hi Natalie, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much. Um, Kaden, I love this live and I'm seriously love you guys. I'm relatively new sub, but I was instantly hooked watching you while doing planty chores. Thank you so much, Kaden. We really appreciate that. We are, um, we do a lot of the stuff that everybody else does, but I think we do try to have a unique style, maybe, you know, on a lot of things, but we try, we try. Um, yes, can't wait, fish poop gold, yes, oh my gosh. Well, the tanks are new, so they haven't cycled fully yet, so there's not a lot of nutrient levels in it, so we kind of <laughs> have to let the nutrients build up first, so. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, just make sure, he said that he has a fan for that one that had the black spots on the leaves, and that it may be getting blocked, like the wind may be getting blocked from the other plants, and that could be causing it. If it's not getting through the forest, then you're probably not getting any airflow on that plant. I don't know if NSC ships to Canada <laughs> or not, Chris. I'm not You'd sure. You have to check their website. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, someone needs a script to help us get auto notifications of restocks. Absolutely. I think that would be a, a great way to go about things because... What they should... Sorry. Go ahead. What they should do is they should have like a waiting list and they should just work their way through the waiting list. Kind of like yeah. what... Uh, Gabriella plants did you know you get on the waiting list it might be yeah. four or five months before you get it but you're going to get it you're going to work your way up the list and eventually yeah. get it where if you just if it's all starting all Hi, over Sherry. again every time they do a restock it's like you may never get a shot at it so yeah wait yeah that's just my opinion <clears throat> they said um Lars Lee said speaking of NSC do you know when they typically restock or is it random I follow a lot of these plant providers on Instagram. And if you follow them on Instagram, a lot of times they'll put in their stories, they'll have like a countdown timer to the restocks. I swear that's how I see half my restocks. I don't even remember half the time. It ha I have to, if I see the timer on their story, I'll set my reminder. And that's the only way I remember because I'm not a goldfish. I don't have any memory at all. So, so there's a question. What's the reason for the slightly crispy edges? <laughs> uh, this one actually that one? that one actually has a little crisp on it but the other ones don't uh, what you're seeing is just the coloration of the plant it's not actually crispy uh, it um, just kind of looks that way but it's really not except for this one little spot right there let me show you guys really close so here's a look at here inside you see how I let it dry out too far when it was putting out a new leaf look here that's a detachable leaf yeah, that's just, this is what happens when you let it go too far when you're, when it's putting out a new leaf. But typically, I've tried to put this escargot under a terrarium, and it doesn't like it. It doesn't want that much moisture and humidity around the leaves. But once it gets to a certain size, these leaves right here, I have stressed them out. Like, I've probably waited a little bit too long before I watered it. It pulled the moisture from the edges of the leaves in that last dramatic attempt to try to stay alive. And that's probably why you're seeing a little bit of crisping. The escargot does not need to be in a cloche, in my experience, in my in my room. So, bye from England, bye Katie. Thank you so much for coming, it was fun. Thank you so much for being a part of our live. We really, really appreciate it. Do you guys have any tips for someone who wants to start a plant YouTube or Instagram? Just start. Like this live was a huge deal for us. We just had to do it. We've been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. You just have to do it. Go back and watch our first video. Oh God, don't it do that. It is terrible. It, it's, it's, it's just it's, me it's, by it's, the way. So you're saying how terrible I was. No, it was us going shopping. We were driving. We were taking pictures, videos of the I landscape. I think that was our first video. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but anyway, go back and watch the first ones and then kind of see the progression. You don't, you can't get better at something until you jump in and try. So you have to kind of fail at it first to, to know how to correct, what to correct and get better at it. Just like anything else in life. <coughs> We're going to cough like a bunch of old people because we've been talking for too long. Um, Mandy0456, how pot bound can a with Lacucci get? My with Lacucci, it's in the other room so I can't go get it because I've got some lights set up right here. But my with Lacucci is in a pot, uh, I think it's a six inch pot, and it's this big. So until the with Lacucci stops growing, or if I notice it getting stressed out, 
I'm not going to repot it. I think they genuinely almost like being bonsai. That's how much they like their roots to be. Because, you know, you've repotted a begonia before and you see how super duper fine their roots are. It takes a long, long, long time before that kind of root is going to create a massive root ball in there. It will eventually, but not very soon. Not not before you kill it, most likely. And who names these plants either? Let's talk about <laughs> that for a minute. Uh, something with Lacucci, and, and that's, that's a mild version of some of these plants. It's just like, wow. I've always assumed that it was sexually starved botanists. Man, the guys that have been closed up in a room for too long, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um... Use your phone. Use what you have. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Start with your phone. Yes, I did. Yes, I did do that with my live. Lyra. What? Yeah, I don't want to say that out loud. Have you ever... Where, 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 had, where? Have you ever had a begonia Carolina folia? No, I have not. <laughs> I actually have... I think I have about 35 to 40 begonias at this point. And there are thousands and thousands of cultivar species and everything else and i only have like probably like one or two out of all of those um morgan thompson hi rachel and casey a little late but love you guys hey what's up thank you so much for coming to the live um i have grown i have grown tuberous non-stop begonias outside in window boxes but never begonias in the house and that's so weird because when i went and bought my begonias from our local nursery that we go to they were like, you're putting these indoors? Like, they were really confused about it. And they were also really rough with my plants, and they could tell that I was freaked out about it. And they slowed down, and they started going slower with them because they thought these were just going to be landscape plants. So, absolutely. I can feel you on that one. With Lacucci makes me giggle every time. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we can't say that one out loud, but, uh, yeah. <clears throat> a bunch of we could talk about the Clitora plant. Absolutely. Have you ever seen a picture of it? No? Yeah, you will after this live. Don't worry about it. Um, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm in love with the red slash black philodendrons. Can you recommend a beginner level begonia that's red and black with long leaves? Begonia with long leaves. <sighs> red and black. If you go onto Instagram and you um, just type in like goth, hashtag goth begonia or hashtag black begonia, you're going to get... A ton of suggestions I don't have any black black ones here necessarily I'm just not drawn to those myself um, you know I'm a recovering goth but I've kind of skipped it with the plant stuff so yeah just go check out Instagram and look at all of them they have a ton and you'll be obsessed because at that point you're gonna see begonias that you're not gonna be able to buy so have fun with welcome that. to the club <laughs> yeah um, Learn as you go, find your own style, and what you enjoy to film and post. Absolutely, Anson, my plants, do it for what you want to do it for. That's the way you got to do it. What's a good, thicker, rubber, rubbery leafed begonia that you could suggest? Um, let's see. That's the one you just had, wasn't it? That was rubbery. I would say any of your Rex begonias, they don't appear to be rubbery, but when you touch the leaf, it's corrugated. It's It feels a little rubbery to the, to the touch. Um, let me show you guys really quick um, an update. I, I want to do it while I'm thinking about it. Let me show you guys an update on one of the begonias that we ordered from Thailand or wherever. wherever. And uh, it was called a Rocky Asia. Eye. And it was like rotting in the bag when we got it. And I'll show you the really cool leaf that's on it now. So. Rocky Eye. Rocky Eye. That was your birthday unboxing, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Well, yes. Yes, it was. She has her terrarium uncovered right now so hopefully she doesn't kill all of our expensive begonias in there <sighs> thank you for your commentary you want to look at covering it back up now all right oh god i'm gonna break something don't break the leaves okay so here's the newest leaf that's come out on my begonia rocky eye and this is one that has the inflorescence on it as well so you can't necessarily see it now but I'm thinking like tomorrow I'll take an Insta story with the flash to where you guys can see it. The pattern on it's pretty intense. It's really cool looking and I can't kinda, wait for that to get a little bit it's bigger. It's kind of hard to get the get it to be that color exactly right. It has to yes. do with the flash of your camera I'm lens and how dark it is in the room when it is flashing. And it, it's the, the, the conditions have to be just right to get that vivid color. Yeah. Is there any more questions that you can see? Oh, I guess I should have been reading them. My dear. 
Uh, I love the Black Mamba Begonia. That's a cool. The Black Mamba is before. really cool. I like that one as well. Steve's Leaves Down Home Begonia is a nice gothic looking begonia. Not familiar with that. Someone liked your glory awesome, Sandra Grant. Someone liked my glory How can they see the glory Uh, Andrea DeCampo, hi. They want to see the glory They want to see it? No, someone said they like her. I wonder if they think that's a glory That might be. That's an El Chaco Red if you're thinking that's a glory That's an El Chaco Red. I'll show you guys the new leaf that my glory round form just put out. Ooh, look how good it looks on camera. Look, babe. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, it is pretty. You guys remember the other one that like got trapped in the pot and the leaf was all ripped to hell? Look at here. That's the first leaf I got. That looks like uh, <laughs> that other one that I got you. But here's the newest one, man. It looks really cool. And it's already got like a new little bit pushing up over here on the side. It likes to go right on the edge, doesn't it? Yeah, and you got to make sure if you guys have one of these, if your little stem right there is not coming up over your pot, it's going to be a problem because it's getting stuck there. So make sure your new leaves are free to roam. In fact, maybe bring your dirt level up to the very edge of the pot on that particular plant because it wants to kind of crawl around the top. For and sure. if you leave your dirt level sure. down, it's going to crawl right into the edge of your pot and you're going to lose some leaf growth. We run into that. Let's see. Uh, do you have the begonia amphioxus? No, I do not. Um, I have been looking for it, but to be honest with you, when I'm given the option of the Amphioxus or something else that I'm looking for, I don't ever pick it. So I think I'm looking forward to getting that one maybe in a trade or something like that, which it doesn't travel at all. So maybe I'll see someone in person that's got one. You never know. Jessica has a Luxurian that's a single node, I guess no. nub, uh, since November it's in a bag and not growing. How do you kickstart uh, it and make it up? I don't think you can. I think you, you are at nature's, you're on nature's timetable at that point. And I had a nub. How long did we have those Maybe nubs? if it's in a greenhouse, maybe the cooler so temperature long. during this time of year, maybe it thinks it's still winter and not time. That you could, maybe bring it inside and put it under a light. Yeah, if it if it's if it's on a heat mat and you, you know, your seed starter mat or whatever, you got it in a bag, you got it in a spag, you're keeping the humidity high. At that point, you just have to be patient, which keep in, sucks. Keep in mind that all of our propagations like that, the <laughs> individual, just single nodes, just a nub like that, yeah. are all yeah. done indoors. So we're not having any temperature fluctuations. <laughs> it's about 70 degrees, and we're controlling the lighting. So Yes, that is a humidifier in the background. That's our Air Innovations humidifier. So that's what you're seeing running back there. Uh, Teresa says, just want to say I love how informed Casey is about the plants. You guys, um, it's really sweet how Casey is informed about the plants because this oh, is I'll stop it. all osmosis. She talks about it so much I can't help but pick up on a little bit. He really cares. He likes my hobbies. He likes, if, if I was into... I like her. That's exactly right. So. If I was into breeding bugs, and I know that's so disgusting for some of you, but if I was into that, he would know bug names. If I was into whatever, if I was into fish 100%, he would know fish names. We like each other's hobbies. I learned a ton when he was doing stuff downstairs against my will. I called it ear rape, as a matter of fact, because I just, I didn't have a choice. So we talked now, to each other. But now, look, it's all kind of come full circle. And really now has. we're combining my aquaponics really hobby has. with your houseplant hobby. It really has. And maybe it'll, we'll both <laughs> fail. Spag it and bag it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, aw, oh, Tracy, that's so sweet. My hair is pretty... Well, I got these new rollers, you guys, and I've been using them all the time. I don't know if you guys noticed. They used to rock a more straighter hair, but I've been using these rollers, and I love them. I slept in them last night, so it was pretty awesome. Make you feel one? <laughs> Ear rape, LOL, and to my plants. Hey, what's wrong with bugs? I'm bug and fish lover as well as plants. Well, I was just trying... I like bugs, too. I'm a, I'm a way back in the day, go on a nature hike and poke at bugs and hold bugs and stuff. But I was just trying to illustrate that um, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter what I'm into. He's into it, too, because he just likes to make me happy. Most of the time. Got to fill the bucket up. Most of the time. Got to fill the bucket up. Because you will empty it from time to time. Um, I plant me... Imee 
says, I see your El Chaco red is in terracotta within a terracotta. Is there a special reason for that? Yes, there is. So, the first terracotta pot it's in is in it because I want it to breathe, right? When I water it, I want it to breathe. The second terracotta pot that it's in is creating space between the drain hole of the pot and the dish because an El Chaco Red is not something you can let sit once you water it thoroughly. You can't let it sit in its own drainage dish. So that creates a insurance policy for me. I'm in a hurry. I have 200 and some odd plants, 250 plants. When I go through, I'm watering and I mean business. I don't have time to do the tub thing, the sink thing, and all that crap. So when I pour water in, I need to know when the water comes all the way out, it's not going to harm the plant. So that's the reason for the double-tiered terracotta pots. Thank you for asking. That was a nice question. We've also put them on little the little plastic dishes, and then we put like little Tammy. props, little Sorry, props underneath it to get it up off of the dish a little bit, so that there's a little bit of a gap there. We've got some like that too. Winston, come here. Everybody wants to see you. Yeah, come here. Everybody wants to see you. Come here, Winston. Well, if you're looking for an amphioxus, this is in the stock right now for thirty-five. It's a really good seller. That's how you curl your hair. <laughs> yeah, I curl my hair. You want to get the bag of the, the curl formers so everybody can know mine. I just mine. showed one of them. Oh, did you? While you weren't looking. Oh, yeah. So it's these. I bought them at Sally's and I put them in my <laughs> pet pee pot. Come here, Wayne Tanner. Everybody wants to see you. Come here, buddy. Oh, he wanted dad. He wanted your daddy. Oh, come here, you big fat fatty. Oh, God. Don't lick so me fat. in the face. <sighs> All right. Oh my gosh, Winston. <laughs> oh, I hope you guys enjoy this because they weigh a lot. Say hi, everybody. Good night, Tammy. Thank you for coming to our first live. <laughs> uh, my other hobby used to be coffee. I was a barista before I had my son, and it was super into the technical side of it and preached coffee like a religion. Look, when you get into something, that's the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear him? Do you mind, Winston? We're trying to talk. <laughs> when you're making coffee, you get really into coffee. I think our brains just tend to really hone in on the things that we truly enjoy. Or we're obsessive know? compulsive. Or we're obsessive compulsive. I've been accused of that a time or 20. Winston snorts never stop. And I get so embarrassed sometimes I film videos. But I can't refilm the whole video because he's snoring. And we don't even notice it anymore. I can't until we watch the video back and we're like, oh my gosh, so it sounds like we have a herd of Bye, Plant Behind Me. You guys have a great night. Actually, you guys, we're going to give like a 10-minute warning or so. I think that I'm going to let you guys ask any uh, other questions about begonias that I haven't seen yet because I'm sorry if I missed your question. I thought I was a fast reader until we did this, and the nerves are keeping me from reading English. Uh, properly, Surely you've calmed so down a bit. I have calmed down a little bit, but I am okay. sweating profusely at this point. Um... Oh my gosh, Frenchies are the best, you guys. If I ever get another dog again, it'll be a Frenchie every single time. Cover Penelope's ears. I know. I'm sorry, Peapot. I love you, but Frenchies are the Don't best. Don't listen to him, Peapot. He is my therapy animal. He is my son. He is my baby. He goes everywhere with me. Everywhere, you guys. And when she leaves without him, he goes to the front door kind of gets in front of the, pulls the curtain back where he can see out the window and pouts. And I kid you not, he will sit there and then he'll walk around and come right back to it and look out the window uh, and pout. Yeah, he's just a big baby. When he was really little, I used, I bought one of those puppy slings that you can wear over your shoulder, right? Like you can put a baby, it's like a baby sling, but it's for a dog. And I took him at grocery store. You're not supposed to do that. I'm sure you're appalled right now. I'm sorry. And I, sorry, went, I was appalled but... too when I... But did not until I got wind and then I needed to go. Sorry, Walmart, but she Sorry. used to go get a doggy bed. Put it. Don't I... you dare tell everybody I did that. Never no, mind. that never happened. Anyways, he goes everywhere with me, so he's super used to me. <laughs> he thinks he's got to go. I can't believe you almost told that story. I didn't I don't know what I was talking about. I'm crazy oh old man. God, bye, ants in my plants. Bye, you guys. Let's see, we have any more. My dog thought you were calling her. Uh, let's. Penelope see. is a Boston Terrier. Bye, into my plants. Aren't I'm you? not sure. Yeah, she's in Boston. 
I'm not sure if you answered this yet because I just joined, but do you use rooting hormone with begonia propagation? And no, I've never used it. I'm not opposed to using it, but I've just never, I've never had to. They've always seemed to be pretty prolific rooters, so we've never had to worry about that. Um, let's see. Sure, golly, he's so fat, babe. I got you here. Oh, Sorry. No biggie. No big deal. <laughs> he looks. He looks not fun. He doesn't look comfortable. Okay. All right. Um. Goodbye from Arizona. You guys are awesome. Sweet dreams. Bye, Debbie. Thank you so much for coming to our live. I hope we see you on our next one. Uh, chicane begonias be staked or left to hang? That's all up to you. That's however you want them to grow. If you want them to hang, let them hang. They will eventually grow some strength in that, in that area. If they fall over and lean over, eventually they'll harden up into that position. If you want it to be a more upward growing, more uh, architectural uh, straight out, excuse you, sir, I am trying to speak. Then you would use like uh, just some canes up and stuff like that. Most of my cane begonias droop eventually, and then I just stake them right back up. Uh, uh, love you guys. I've been binge watching and so glad I finally subscribed. Oh, thank you so much, Tracy. We really appreciate that. We are, our subscribers are going pretty fast right now. Uh, oh, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, he gotcha. Oh, man. Let me get your belly. You put all 50 pounds into that claw. Oh. Dang it. Lives yeah. are very terribly distracting, what aren't they? You don't know. What'd you do? I didn't do nothing. Okay. Well, we're going to have to say goodbye, you guys. I can't see any more of the chat screen anymore. I don't know what happened. Let's see. No. Don't know what happened. Hang on. Sorry. Oh, there, there we are. Okay, we're, we're back, back on it. We're back on. We're back and on. we're back. <laughs> Just wanted to say, y'all are amazing. We're one of the first channels I came across from and always look forward to your videos. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Um, I love the live with you both. Thank you guys so much. Courtney A., Monica Scotia, Anson My Plants, Tracy Day, Mary Boots, Peanuts Plants. Thank you so much for hanging in there. This has been a really long live. Not as long as Pam's. But that girl, she I could listen to her talk for literally six hours. So thank you guys so much for coming. Um, so we're just going to say goodbye right now. We um, Are you going to you gonna be able to stop it from what you're doing or no, whatever? No, just... Just, okay. Uh, just say goodbye. So, thank you guys so much for coming. We love you guys so much. I am thoroughly sweating all the way through this shirt. So, I appreciate you guys coming and not disappointing everybody in the house tonight with three people in our live. I cannot believe there's still 127 of you guys here. So, we love you so much. Mwah, mwah. Good night. And if you guys have any more begonia questions, don't be afraid to hit me up. In my Instagram. Or comment afterward. We'll post it afterward. Comment, comment afterwards. And I'll be working really hard tomorrow to answer all those questions. And I would love to include some, you know, questions in an upcoming care video. So that we can be really thorough with questions that people really have about begonias. I know we weren't super on topic tonight. But it was my first live. So, bear with me, you guys. So, bye, you guys. I'm going to get really close to the camera now. Because I want to try to turn it off. See ya! <laughs> Bye. Here we go. I don't know how to do it. No. This is where her nails really becomes a problem. <laughs>